I studied landscape architecture in Wageningen in, 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 at the Agricultural University. I then started being a freelance in, in, in urban planning and landscape architecture. Then I became, for 18 years, I was uh, in the direction of uh, B plus B, and the last seven years I was director of B plus B landscape architecture and planning. And since 1997, I'm, um, I'm work on my own with, uh, I have a sort of network of, of, of officers. So people help me execute my plans. I'm just uh, starting it and designing it and they execute it and they follow it and make the, make the, uh, the technical drawings. But I don't have any personnel, only a personal assistant which I didn't never know that that was very modern, but at that time uh, I just thought it was practical to do it that way. And, um, and I do mostly, uh, the half of my work is landscape architectural projects, and the other half is city planning, uh, transform, uh, uh, supervising big transformations of, of, of harbor areas and, and, and city, uh, uh, you know, derelict lands, um, and how the city, takes it over again and how, how to build it. So that's my other work. But I think it's very important to, um, to, um, to listen to the site and to be, as, uh, to be uh, very precise in what, where, what you, how, to, how you intervene. And I like it when it is very precise and very little to do little things with a maximum effect and so often and, 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 and have it fitting huh? very much it must function and it must fit and if it fits people just think it's always there so often I have done a lot of things and then they, I come with people and said what have you done here I can't see anything and then I said no this is what I've done and then it, that I find always a very much a compliment that what you've done is invisible but it is there, but it's not visible. And if it's too much visible, which is often with, uh, with landscape architecture, it's over-designed. It's look at my ego, which I put on the earth, which I don't like. I, maybe others like it because it's very designy, but I, 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 it doesn't fit me at all. Good design is about minimalism, about, uh, uh, about um, timelessness. Sometimes I, I, I use things uh, to, 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 to make it more um, elaborate, more beautiful. But, uh, so I do it, but very restrained and very precise. So in things that are necessary, I in integrate it in fences or in, uh, in uh, pavilions or in necessary artifacts or in playgrounds that you can design in a way that they are very special. Uh, so I do it, but only if, if it's needed, if something needs a little, little boost, a little pepper in it, then I do it. It doesn't have to always be very flashy to be uh, well used and, 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 and well, uh, well loved. My most happy moments are, I love, uh, I, when, when I get an assignment, I get an assignment and then they explain it to me. I always go back on my own, completely on my own. Nobody has to talk. I just want to see and listen and look and walk and, and experience the site. Then I start designing and that I do completely in silence and on my own with nobody else can spend a day with seeing nobody. And that's my most uh, happy moments in my life when I really start drawing and drawing and drawing and, and, and so that and, and, and I don't do the analyzing uh, as a separate part of the design I go from the design to the analyzing go back again how why, why is this like this and then I design again and that I do that in, in complete silence no music nothing and uh, that's very happy I love that <laughs> I'm very receptive to what I see around me this job never ends only when you sleep even then maybe not but it never ends and it is not a burden it is a joy to see in everything I always see oh how did they detail this and how did how do they make it what is this material or when I see a piece of art uh, it can, can be so different you see inspiration in everything so, um, I, I go a lot to museums and I buy a lot of uh, modern art uh, because uh, yeah 
that 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 fascinates me, and it is uh, um, it's also the, a sign of the time. It it inspires me to see what artists do now. It gives also a sort of idea of where we're going to. When you when you relax and are completely uh, um, uh, focused in those moments of, of, of happiness, then you're just completely open, open-minded, then suddenly out of the inside come things. And that is what you have experienced. That's how I, I can, can explain that the best. And that experience, that, that richness of all the things you've seen, somehow comes back, but never directly nor precisely. It comes back as a mother thing, oh, it must be as quiet as this, or it must be, uh, yeah, this color, or, or yeah. Can very be very, very different. My my national habitat is very much um, an open space where you can see the horizon, where you where, where there's breath and openness and and, and 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 air. I need lots of. I like also spaces, built spaces that are high, where you have enough above you. I like the atmosphere of a cloister of a church without embellishments. So very abstract landscapes. I mean, in the north of Holland and in the south of Holland, it's very extreme. It's just open, open, no trees, nothing. Beautiful. I saw a film, I can't remember anymore, a movie, and it, had, it started with wind over a cornfield. Strange, huh? but it started, it was black and white still, right? it's right way in the 60s. And it's a beautiful movie, but I can't. And, and it started with a picture of the wind blowing through the cornfields, not corn, wheat. So then you see those harms going like a sea of this uh, vegetation.